All right, y'all. I think we live. Yeah. Hello, hello, everybody. And we want to welcome you to our live stream. And we are featuring the faithful and discreet frauds this evening. It is Lady C, JT, and Ephraim. And we're going to be hanging out with y'all this evening. Go and what we are doing is um, we are going to be talking about this new situation with the governing body. And we're going to be hanging out with y'all for no longer than about 60 minutes. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be trying to um, take your comments um in the we're going to keep up with your comments and um we're going to also um later on you know after maybe about a couple about 20 minutes or so um 20 or 30 minutes we're going to open up the um the stream for anybody who might want to join us so if you think that you want to come on for like two or three minutes and have your say about what's going on and you don't want to just put your comments in the chat please send us a private message with your email and we will send you a link to the stream. Now we can't have more than 10 people on the stream at one time. So I will try to, at, at our discretion, try to put as many people as we can online if they want to say something. So I just want to like throw that out there to you and let you know what we're trying to do. In the meantime, we are going to get this party started. All right, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Yeah, we want to thank everybody for, for joining us this evening. Uh, we know this past week has been a very interesting week for Jehovah's Witnesses, and as well as for those of us in the ex-Jehovah's Witness community. And the reason why is because so many of us are still connected to the Watchtower, either through family, through friends, through people we know, or just ourselves trying to get out. And so what happens in this religion, sad to say, oftentimes impacts those of us on the outside, uh, good or bad or indifferent. Uh, this is something that will follow us, as we all know, for many years because of how we were raised, how we viewed it. This past week, we know they announced that uh, there's been the appointment of some new governing body members. And it's kind of, it's, this is, it's really interesting because of how this entire uh, perspective about the governing body has come about. You know, I, I just I was talking to my lady C about, you know, when I was at Bethel, the governing body and how they were, uh, they were very, very low key. You did not know who they were. They stayed out of the limelight. Uh, most people around the world only knew a couple of members of the governing body, maybe Fred Franz and uh, just a Grant Suter, because Grant Suter's name was in all the publications as the secretary treasurer. Other than that, most people know who they were. Well, <laughs> This new set of governing body, these boys are rock stars and they love it. I mean, when you come into a, an assembly and you're signing people's Bibles because they want your signature, you know things have changed. And the fact that they now are having to appoint new members of the governing body, younger guys of the governing body, it really speaks to what is happening in this organization. And that is they literally have no idea where in the stream of time we really are. For almost what 150 years almost different individuals who have served as the governing body have come and gone and each and every one of these guys stood up before tens of thousands of people and said the end is soon it's right around the corner and so now we see exactly that they really don't know where in the stream of time we are and now they're replacing new people you know, I, I, we was doing some uh, discussion the other day. Uh, Raffi came out about, you know, how it has changed and how they feel about themselves. And we know that today the governing body has a whole different role, a whole different viewpoint about themselves. Uh, many people may not realize it, that at one time the governing body actually, they actually wrote it in all lowercase, the governing body. Because it was just really a description, like the boxing governing body or, or cycling governing body. But over the years, they have literally made it into a position. It's really a power move. And that's what they have done. And we saw that over the years, especially when it comes to people who are called the anointed. Uh, I wanted to just show you something, if you didn't mind. Um, it has to do with a question from readers that was posed about the anointed. And what they said, I think really, it, it really sums up how they view people who they call of the anointed. 
Uh, I'm going to get Lady C. She's going to read just a portion of it because what it does, it really just speaks volumes about how these guys feel about their other anointed brothers. Lady C, could you share that with 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 uh, everyone for us? Okay, so the uh, what I did was I put a slide up here on the screen. Thank you. And I don't know if everybody can see it, but it's from the questions from readers. I don't know if I'm gonna read this whole thing. No, just that little but, part that we discussed um, earlier. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the memorial partakers, and I gotta get to my other machine so I can see because I can't see. Um, it's talking about um, this is the number of baptized individuals who who partake uh, of the emblems at the memorial worldwide and. It says, does this total represent the number of anointed ones on earth? Not necessarily. Then it says a number of factors, including past religious beliefs or even mental or emotional imbalance might cause some to assume mistakenly that they have the heavenly calling. And then it just kind of goes on to say, but we thus have no way of knowing the exact number of anointed ones on earth, nor do we need to know. The governing body does not keep a list of all partakers for it does not maintain a global network of anointed ones. Yeah. So that's the question from readers. Yeah. Now, before we move on, um, Ephraim, do you have a, a thought that you would like to make real quick? I don't want to call you out, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Thank you guys for having me. I've been a fan yeah. since forever. But Thanks for, um, thanks. Thanks for your support. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I was waking up, one of the first videos that I of uh, first channels that I encountered were, were you guys. And um, with this point here, it just reminds me of the video that you guys made some time ago that the numbers don't add up. According to like if you when you try to add, see how many of the 144,000 might still be uh alive today the numbers don't add up and yeah. when i heard this announcement of two more people that are going into the uh governing body i'm like how long are these uh is the watchtower going to stretch the 144,000? yeah exactly excellent point, excellent point. yeah you know it's, it's kind of it's kind of when you look at when, when you think about the ephraim um and for those of you in the audience, you know, just just stop and think about it. the the Watchtower knows every single elder on the face of the earth. They know every ministerial servant on the face of the earth. They know every pioneer on the face of the earth. They know their names, and yet they will state make the statement that they don't even know who the anointed is, and that kind of raises the issue of well, how do you select someone? to be on the governing body if you don't even know who they are. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know and, and the thing is that with statements like this, I remember when I was in uh, the English congregation in Puerto Rico, and there was uh, a, a lady that was fr from the anointed. Uh, she partook of uh, from the emblems. And boy, she, was she treated badly in that congregation. Yeah. And it's because yeah. of statements like this that they say, okay, if... if the faithful and discreet slave is saying that these people might be mentally unbalanced. Automatically, they say, "Okay, we don't have to uh, accept their belief that they're going to heaven." Right. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was in uh, Michigan, and it was interesting because there was a sister who I think she must have been waking up at the time, looking back on everything, and it was kind of interesting because the brother was like, "He can't. He was at our house and." He was talking about how she came to the memorial and she was dressed all in white and then she partook of the emblems and everything. And then later on, the, the rumor had started that people thought that she was um, mentally unstable and had 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 a breakdown or something. And and then, at, and, you know, at that point, you know, she stopped coming to meetings and things like that. And so I was like, oh, my goodness. So then later on, like, you know, fast forward years later, it's like, oh, she probably found out this wasn't the truth, and then she went to go partake, you know. But it was, it was, it was just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it it it, it is. Um, I, I remember when I was at Bethel, man. They, I, I used to talk to a couple of guys in the writing department, and they would get people who were of the anointed would write in because I, I always grew up in all. I remember the elders always telling us, you know, the anointed all around the world. They they send things into the society and to the branches, and that's how it gets in the magazine and so forth. 
And I was talking to a couple of guys who actually worked in writing. They actually would laugh at people. If a person wrote a letter and indicated they was of the anointing, they was trying to share something, those guys would just laugh at them. Uh, it, to them, they took it as a joke. And when you look at how the governing body is selected, that's really amazing. Um, basically, they have a farm team. <laughs> they have a farm team. <laughs> it's basically called the, it, at one time it was called the given ones. And then it became now the helpers. Uh, I, I, I was laughing with his brother who was texting back and forth. And he said, you know, it's funny because the watchtower used to do that, that types and any type stuff. And that's where they got those ones they called the given ones. And uh, once they got rid of the types and any types, well, we're not going to teach that no more. You know, this is this represents this from the Bible time. They end up literally they end up just pushing that term given ones literally under the table. And then they came up. Now we just call them helpers. And it's funny that many times these helpers are not anointed. But for some reason, they always seem to end up turning into one of the anointed and selected. And uh, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's like a little farm team. And, and basically, they end up being selected because of their relationship with the current governing body member. They, 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 don't, exactly. they don't really look for it. Um, one of the things that, you know, we were discussing about it, too, which is kind of interesting, is that uh, the Watchtower does not reach around the world many times. Because one of the things that witnesses often are very proud to tell people is that, you know, we're an international organization. We're an international organization. And yet, when an opportunity to actually demonstrate that, uh, the Latino community, the Asian community, I mean, many of these brothers have suffered for years. And once again, we see them, what do they do? They didn't reach around to all around all parts of the earth. But as they said, we don't know who these guys are, and we don't really care. And so when you have an organization that point blank says, we don't care, how does that sound when you're talking about a brother of Christ? I mean, that's 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 absolutely crazy. That's right. And you know what? I'm trying to find this comment that Paul Onloff had put up here. And he put this comment up here talking about just what you're talking about. <laughs> so I can't find it. Yeah. And okay. you know, it's funny. It's funny. Too, if, you, if you go to JW.org, this if you go to JW.org right now, they actually have an article on racial equality, God's people. And I'm thinking... Right yeah, here it is, right there. Yeah, this is what this is what is on the front of JW.org. What better opportunity to demonstrate that than to show it at the very highest levels of the organization? But like I say, you know, the Spanish brothers, because I know I know for decades, man, if it was not for the Latino brothers in the United States, uh, the United States numbers would look like absolute trash. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Latino brothers, they've kept the numbers up. And so you mean to say there's no Latin brother who's of the anointed that you could pull into the, you know, and they're saying that brothers from the, in the Asian Pacific, Japan, the Koreas, I mean, all those countries, those brothers, I mean, they, they grind, they grind to the grind. And yet they didn't even look in those countries, man. They didn't. Yeah, even it would make, they, it would make sense that if there were representation all over the world, because of what we were taught since the beginning, like yes. all this variety and that Jehovah is choosing from all these other nations. So it would make sense that they would have representation from all these other countries. Now, yeah. uh, the, one of the things that I was, was thinking, or I was questioning myself when this announcement came up was when this, did these two uh, individuals get anointed? At what point were they anointed? Like, were they anointed since forever, or did they just recently get, get anointed? Because if it was recent, like in a couple of years ago, I I question myself. Like all these helpers that you know they're trying to raise up, uh, climb the ladder. Yeah. When are they gonna get their calling? Yeah. And. It, it, I, it's, I it's, like hope, a, it's like a little farm team, like a baseball farm team almost. Yeah, I just hope that one of these helpers that like they are really trying, struggling to get up there, that they will get really mad and say, you know what, if I'm not going to get my calling and they're going to keep on because this is a kind of like a business, you know, yes. uh, it people is. are going to keep on passing me uh, over. So, OK, I'll, I'll just defect. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. Uh, but like you said, it just now lays as, as one person said, you know, we're, we're, we're rounding up, up into the what the third overlapping. Pretty soon it's going to be the fourth overlapping. And and, yeah. it, and, and, and I think for so many people who are witnesses and, and this is what I tell you all the time, man. 
sometimes when you leave, you run into issues. Sometimes people may say, well, did I leave for the right reason? Should I go back? You know, we always tell people when you see crazy stuff like this going on, you need to use this as a confirmation. <laughs> I'm glad I got out. I oh, could yeah. not go back because these are really confirmation markers because we never took the time to step back and look and see what we were really a part of. And when you do, man, it's 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 like it's like you it's like you see a whole different light, a whole different light. Absolutely. I think that they groom these brothers because oh, yeah. when you really think about it, how do you know they're not saying, well, you know, um, do you think you have some kind of because, you know, when they think that somebody might be um they got to replace these brothers with somebody. Yeah. We already realized that when we were Jehovah's um, Witnesses, when we were in the organization, all of the brothers that were of the governing body are all gone now. None yeah. of the original brothers, when we were still going to meetings, are even alive. They're all deceased. Mm -hmm. So you got to remember that with this religion continuing to go on, um, they've got to replace them with someone. Other than that, I don't know what the religion would do, because yeah. at some point they kept saying, well, didn't they just do a, uh, maybe a couple years ago, I think um, they did something at, a, at an assembly or something at a, at a convention. And they talked about how there may become a time when there will not be any representation on Earth. Didn't they do something like that? Yeah, I yeah that. They, 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 they've, they've played around. Th this is what gets them in trouble. Yeah. They love to speculate. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what they're talking about, but to keep the witnesses excited, to keep them on the edge of their seat, they'll just start throwing speculation stuff. Well, brothers, there might not be no anointing on the earth, but you're going to be okay. Jehovah going to take. Now, the Bible never said what's going to happen. So why are you just making this stuff up? I mean, you're just making it. I think it was heard. And he was, just, and he was right. literally making it up along the way. I mean, they just pull it out of their back pocket and just throw it out there and see who, who, who dives in for it. And, uh, and so when I look back at myself, I remember you'd be sitting on the edge of your seat with bated breath for the next word. And then you look back and you realize it was all hocus pocus, just hocus pocus. Yeah. And I, I was going to say that because I, I, I remember that, that they speculated at one time, like, okay, there's not going to be anybody here. So I would, I, I would expect, I would not be surprised if they make that move. It's like, okay, so now all of a sudden we're going to be, there's not going to be any more anointed ones in the governing body. And then we're just going to close that door. Uh, yeah, they, they're a little bit too arrogant for that, but I would not be surprised either. Man, you can't put nothing. And when, when, speaking of arrogance, we had a chart that we wanted to show everybody. It's, it's, it's a chart that we've seen before, but it really just drives home the point where they show the, the they show the hierarchy of the organization. Um, Hold on, let me I find mean, it. it. Yeah, if you look at the hierarchy of the organization, man, this is amazing because. How do you take something and teach it as what the word of God says? And then you can, as a human, arbitrarily snatch out a snatch out positions, man. How do you do that? I mean, they have literally just wiped the whole faithful in the sweet slave and governing body out, combined it together and put themselves in the slot next to Jesus. And when I'm talking to a, when I'm, I'm talking to a Jehovah's Witness, I always try to drill down right down to the bone. Because you're telling me that Tony Mars and his seven, now nine colleagues are between you and God? And, and, and so when you talk to a witness, you can see the, 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 two things happen. The wheels, e the wheels either start turning or they shut down. They shut down. They shut down. Absolutely. I mean, this is an old um, picture from a, one of those old publications, right? Yeah, they haven't updated it yet. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I, I haven't seen any new chart yet. I haven't seen any new chart come out yet. Right. Yeah. Oh my But goodness. I mean, uh, at first, the first thing when I when I heard the the announcement, um, and I saw the 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 video of the, um, I forgot who it was that was making the presentation. Like, oh, uh, this is uh, uh, such a blessing. Well, I mean, I'm I'm confusing one thing with another, but uh, they're talking about the uh, when they cut off the hours. Um, yeah. when they, 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 I, I remember that the first thing that I felt was I, I was angry because I've been in sales for 36 years and what he was doing was a sales pitch right there. 
Oh my goodness. And yeah. and what made me upset is that I know that the members of the congregation are just gonna eat it up. Yeah. There are there are many who will, but for so many men, when they see this type of stuff, it makes them take pause. And that's and that's the and that's the nice part about having channels like this on the internet where a witness can actually come to and realize, because you remember when you start thinking these kind of thoughts at the kingdom hall, the first question you ask is, am I going crazy? Am I, you know, cause you know, everybody is sitting, everybody's sitting around you. They just nod in their head. Yeah. I'll drink the Kool-Aid. What flavor yeah. is it? It don't matter. I'll <laughs> drink anything you serve. And, and then they begin to question themselves. But then when they go out to the internet, like channels like this and so many others, they're like, man, I'm not crazy after all. And that is when the, it, that is when the process starts. And I tell you, know, you know, I, I tell you all the time that is the importance about having the different content creators, because basically the different content creators, they address things from all different angles. I mean, they cover we cover the watchtower up and down so that people, unlike our parents, you know, they won't have to deal Oops. with not knowing things that we know today. I mean, that, that is that is that is the, that's the beauty of it. Today, if you're ignorant about Jehovah's Witnesses, as we say, it is by choice because the information oh, yeah. is definitely right. Wrong. Yeah, that's somebody what I say. Well, and, and said that the appointment, somebody said that the appointment shows that we have another 50 plus <laughs> years before Armageddon <laughs> because the overlapping <laughs> generations teaching. <laughs> Good observation. Yeah, they, 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 they 50 more years on board. <laughs> Man, when they first announced that, uh, it was in 95, if I'm not mistaken, that the first announcement of the overlapping generations, yeah. I was so upset because hey, the, the person who who did the announcement, which was uh, Ronald uh, Parkin, he's uh, from also from Bethel, and yeah. he this is what bothered me. He said, the society had never said has never said that the 1914 generation will be and like, well, I mean, I had the forever book right in my bag in the assembly. I'm like, how can you dare say that you never said it? I have it right here, yeah. but I should have just got up and left and never returned. And I just, for some reason, you just stay there. Yeah. Like, like you just said, you just kind of like push it back, but, and shut down, shut down, yeah, but shut down. Back then, the, where at least where we were in Puerto Rico, there was no internet, no nothing, so I could not do any research. But that's why I also agree. Nowadays, in the internet era, there's no excuse to be a no right. Yeah. Now, that know, was well, that was one of the day, major. I, teachings we were, that's um, one of the major teachings. You said you were in Puerto Rico, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I used to live in Aguadilla. Oh, yeah. I was in Añasco, like five minutes from you. Oh, is that right? Oh my God! Yeah. I have to talk offline. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. So you were from the English congregation in Aguadilla. Yeah. Oh, so we we I'm I'm pretty sure we know some some uh, common names. But this has there. been a minute, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. And and that's the thing, man. It doesn't matter what doesn't matter where in the world you live, we were all fed the same thing from the same trough, and therefore that shaped our views. And 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 what makes it so sad, man, is that these men called the governing body, um, they they literally control our lives. I mean, everything mm -hmm. that we did, we wanted to make sure that we checked to see what they wrote up in a magazine. Um, that was probably one of the, the worst things about being an elder was just how many times the friends, I mean, grown people, man, 25, 30, 40 years, 50 years old. Can we do that? Is that okay? We just never knew what we could and could not do because we needed to check first. And so these guys have a tremendous amount of power because they influence our families, our moms, our brothers and our sisters, our cousins, to the point where they would turn their back on us, man. Turn, oh, yeah. Literally turn their back on us. And, and it's all because of what these guys have said. And so this is what impacts us. And so now we see a whole new generation, a whole new crop of guys who will be claiming we speak for God, listen to what we say. I mean, it is. Right. Uh, yeah, I see Brian like, James put a comment up here. I don't know if he put a comment up here what earlier. Say? He has a correction that he said new CEOs aren't going out past 50. What's up with that? 
Oh, uh, the man. Tenth hour? I, I know they I know they're retiring. I know they are retiring. Oh, the age. Yeah, they. I, I don't know. Is it, is it fifty six? I know there's an age limit. Now this. Yeah. Now check this out. Is it not <laughs> ironic that they will have these guys? They will sit them down, and yet these guys will not be sitting down. They right. will. They're like, no. I'm going to stay here till I die. Until you die. <laughs> I mean, it's for man. That it's is, amazing. And yeah. um, I mean, I'm just saying. I I remember when we were in the congregation with one of your friends from Bethel that came down and they were in our congregation and yeah. they had me on this roller coaster ride with them. And we were in this thing where every time a change came down the pipe, we just loved it. And we were reinforcing it. And we were like, Oh yeah, the change is here. And we were, they had me going crazy with them. Right. And I was excited to hear about these new changes and stuff. And then once you sit back and realize that these changes are not really good changes because it's not good for the people that's, you know, giving up their lives and not, you know, you know, saving for the future kind of thing. Then you realize that, hey, look, you know, we're, we're really in some trouble here, you know. But I think, you know, they're still going strong and I think they're still in that mindset. And I think that a lot of people still feel that way. I think that oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If, 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 if people don't see a change or they don't see these changes coming through the organization, they they don't really feel comfortable. And I think the society realizes that, that these people yeah, want that, these changes. They want these exactly changes. Like, Some of these people do. Like, yeah, yeah. Like JT said, I mean, they rule, they, they rule our lives. It's like um, when, when people like uh, the brothers and the sisters of the congregation, they will not say what they have a question. They don't say or ask what the what does the Bible say? No, what does the watchtower say? Have you read that in a watchtower? Uh, so they will look into the literature, and if it doesn't matter if the Bible says something different, if the watchtower says this, that is the rule. Period. Yeah. But you know what's so hypocritical about that? And I, I think back to even myself. When you are out in field service, or when you talk to people at the door, or people in your job. We always played the watchtower's role in our lives. We played it down. We always present as, you know, this is just some commentary on, you know, various scriptures of the Bible. We never told these people that if we violate anything that's in this book, we in trouble. We would never let someone actually know that. And yet that's what we did. But when we gave it to people, we talked to people, we try to present it like it's just some interesting commentary that you know, was written up, you know, and we think it's positive and everything. But but people, if you were to tell people, I just want you to know that anything in this magazine, if you're not doing it, God got to kill you. If we were to tell people that, it, it tells you off their doorsteps. Oh, that's true. Our coworkers would laugh at us. <laughs> oh, definitely. And about but you know the what? Changes. We know how to hide. You know what? I, you know what? It kind of reminds me of you know when we were Jehovah's Witnesses. It's like you know they always try, we, we called each other brothers and sisters, right? So when you were in your own family. And maybe there was something going on in the family. There were certain things that you would not divulge about your family because that's just your business. So when it came to the religion, we knew how to hide things that we knew were that, that was crazy. We knew we we hid the crazy stuff. We hid so like the crazy you said, stuff. JT, you go, you go out and feel service. You know you ain't gonna tell people that you're gonna be shunning your family members if they don't believe what this what these men say out of New York because you know they're gonna laugh you off the doorstep. It's the same thing. You know, we we know we know how to hide things from that Bible study or potential yeah, they, studies. They, and what's ironic is that they accuse like the apostates of be of telling lies and half truths but that's what we're trained to do when we go out in service somebody gives you ask you a question you don't give them the real answer you give them a half truth you give them a run around you don't even in in the last uh convention that they did the video and the person uh, asked um, anita or the other girl um uh he asked she asked her a question about uh, Armageddon and if I'm going to be destroyed or something. And she said, I'll ask, I will answer that question later. But during the entire convention, that question was never answered. Yeah. Yeah. And now, mm -hmm. and now they have a free get out. Now they got that free get out of jail card. Uh, just going over to JW.org. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, they you, love that. You got to admit that you got to admit that is a good one though. I mean, That's that a is good a good one. One. Any, any question you, any question someone asks you, you just say, go to JW.org. 
But I'm going to tell you the best way to get them back. And, man, you want to have some fun? Tell a Jehovah's Witness, well, that's actually where I went. And so I, <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually where I went. And so I figured the next time I see a Jehovah's Witness, I would ask them about what I read on JW.org. And I knew you were down here on the street corner almost every other day. So I'm here to ask you a question about what I read on JW.org. And so, yeah. <laughs> they will just, I mean, back in the day, it was like, okay, uh, I'll be back in a week. I'll be back in a week. Yeah, that was a good one. I'll be back in a week. And you just do your research or never go back. It, it kind of reminds you of a uh, of a um, multi level marketing organization. Yeah, when you have someone who invites you to a multi level marketing uh, organization presentation, if you ask them questions about it, and they already done signed up and everything, right? You ask them questions about it, they'll say, "Well, I can't explain it. I want you to hear him explain it. He can explain it better." And I always thought it was kind of ironic. You mean to tell me you got involved in a business? And you don't even know what you're in where you can explain to somebody. Yeah. If he was talking to somebody who started a little electrical company or a little plumbing company, he could explain to you exactly what he does. I come in, I can put your bathroom in, put your sink in, your tub in, take care of this and bring your pipes in. He could tell you what he does. So when someone is involved in something, then they can't even explain what it is. I mean, that is an absolute red flag. It's just a red flag. Yes, like the uh, who could explain the seven times and all the Daniel stuff back in the day, and now it's the overlapping generations. Which, at least, at least with the Daniel stuff, if you uh, you got the math and you did this and you say, okay, here, 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 but man, the overlapping generations. That's, I mean, yeah. I try to put myself like if I was still a Jehovah Witness, I could not, I, I, I would not be able to to teach that. That's why you had to leave, man. That's, that's why we had to leave. And, and that's why. So and, and now with, with what's happening now, um, there are people who simply are not going to go back. They have just decided they're going to just fade out. And for those who go back, there are so many witnesses now, man. And you can tell by what is happening in the congregations and the talks that they're given. They now have probably one of the most lackadaisical group of people they've ever had. I'm here at the meetings. I hear you talking, brother. Hi, right, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And and so you have this, this total, I don't really care. <laughs> and the fr and so more friends, man, they're just moving on quietly in the yeah. privacy of their homes and in the privacy of their private life. They're just moving on, doing other things, man. They're just doing other stuff. They ain't gonna yeah. tell nobody. They're gonna just do it, keep it, keep it moving. So yeah, that's that's, that's the worst too. thing for a high control group. Right. Um, somebody had um, sent me an email uh -huh. and they were talking about um, what's his name? Samuel Hurd. And they were and, and some people were saying something about him having. Does he have dementia? Uh, he may because he's getting up there. Yeah. The, but they were up. saying that on the one of the broadcasts yeah, he that may. he was kind of like saying things that didn't make sense. Yeah. And so I'm wondering with this new uh, these two new uh, two new brothers that they appointed to the body. Um, they're probably gonna you're, you're gonna probably see them more on JW broadcast. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They 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 they're gonna, they're gonna just quietly as, as they as they say they're gonna quietly push them out on the on 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 the block of ice. You know, like and for all you know, yeah. for all we know, they probably already got a whole bunch of stuff they've already recorded, pre-recorded. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? You know, I know, right? <laughs> I I read on um at, uh in Twitter that one of them had this position as a like a fire marshal or something like that it has this position in the government or used to have so that's that's interesting it's like what do we know about these two yeah and and that's the thing as as wow. a witness you we one of the things is fascinating about Jehovah's witnesses is that we just accepted whatever they sent down the pipeline we we just accepted it yeah and yet and yet you would sit on a bible study and you would commend a bible study for not doing the exact same thing that a Jehovah's Witness would just do without question. I mean, it's, it's the, 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 the double standard, the hypocrisy that that, that we uh, had to exhibit. And, you know, one guy refers to it as, as mental gymnastics. To make something fit, we got to roll it up like a pretzel to, makes it, to make it fit. Because if you just lay it out on the table, it don't fit. It don't work. Yeah, I mean... Uh, it when they announced the, that they were going to preach now less, um, I know for a fact that I would not have been happy with that. Because when I started in this organization, they were telling always that 
the faster we preach, the sooner the end will come. So in, in my mind, it would be like every time we have to preach more, not, not less. And I have friends that are uh, PMOs, you know, that so they and they, they contact me and say, everybody over here is making a party out of this. Oh, this is such a blessing from Jehovah that we're going to preach less. I'm like, it does not make sense if you're preaching less. You have to <laughs> preach more if you want the end to come. Well, you know, most witnesses don't want to go out there anyway. But, you yeah, know, know, it's kind of interesting that you said that. One of the things that really, you know, and, and I, I mean, it kind of took me by surprise. I mean, um, when they decided to literally just cut out for all practical purposes, man, printing Watchtower and Awake magazines without doing it in multiple issues, but literally just having one issue, y'all just place this all year. The next six months, just place this one magazine. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I said it is because I can understand if you say, well, there's not a lot of printing. Okay. But everything is online. So that means as we move deeper into the last days, why would mankind need less material to read, to come to understand the Bible? Because they could put it online. So when you think about like the writing department, I can't imagine how much they scale back just the writing department because you don't need no, you, you know, you was writing 48 magazines. So you could actually just move them right online. You could have cut all printing out and just move them straight online. And had those articles still being written because they was providing spiritual food. They just cut all that out together. Like, we're going to run one issue and we're going to go back and print some reprints. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goodness. It's really getting bad. It's really yeah. getting bad. The new generation of governing body members are getting lazy. <laughs> they get lazy. <laughs> That's just too much research to be doing, man. We got another <laughs> magazine this week, too. And that's really what it was. Because, man, when I was at Bethel, that was a big thing. Those guys in the writing department, because they had to get, you either had a wake or a magazine coming out back to back, back to back, back to back. And those guys would be down in the office late at night trying to get those articles done. And now you just write one article for the year, two, every six months. Man, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I wonder uh, how much of those articles are actually written by the current governing body or oh, not by the not health the, the, the governing body don't write no articles they, that's they, they have a writing department they send it by their office and take a peek at it and see what you like they, they yeah, yeah that makes yeah, sense they, because they, they already that, that, was a, that was one of the first things i asked about when i was at bethel you know, does the governing body write the articles they're like nah larry writes it. <laughs> <laughs> i thought they were using some sisters to write too they you now check check to. this out I, I, we have a buddy barbara anderson yeah i did not know that barbara worked in writing because they typically don't have any sisters in writing you might find the one of the girls up at the front the, you know when you come in the reception but basically you, you would not think they would have the sister in the back i remember having this conversation with barbara and she says basically what they did with the sister it was cold-blooded man they basically used the women to do the research a uh, sister go and read oh, wow. uh, these, these 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 five volumes and then find me two clips i can use for a magazine article and that's basically what they did they had the sisters, and she would say they would pour over just books and books and volumes of volumes of stuff just to get, like, two sentences. The brother would say, I know it's in there somewhere. I, I, I read it four or five years ago. Could you see if you can find it? For me? <laughs> and so they got to sit there and read, try to find one sentence that he's going to use on a magazine. Like, he must be crazy. And so, <laughs> but that's what they did. And so they basically used the women to do, like, the heavy lifting, the research stuff, and then they would come up with their summary, you know, their summary copy, and they would just take that and and go from there. I mean, so women worked in writing. They just did all the heavy lifting for all practical purposes. I mean, you know how these guys are. You got to love these guys, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember in, in Puerto Rico, uh, the first congregation I went to, uh, the back then where there was a presiding overseer, his daughter was the one who wrote the talks for him. Oh, man. Don't don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. <laughs> oh, so, man. Oh, I, I did not know you this. You know I wrote all your talks for you. I'm just oh, kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 she makes a good point. Uh, I was we were surprised because we started talking to you know we started talking to people. We were surprised how many sisters wrote their husbands' talks. Wow. And 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 what's so ironic about that? When when you start doing some uh research into Charles Taz Russell, I remember talking to people, you know, they, they go way back. Um that was one of the issues that, that happened for what I understand with Charles Taz Russell and his wife. She wrote a lot of it. Remember, he would go overseas and mm -hmm. she was back home 
keeping stuff churning. And oh, yeah. one of the big issues they had was that she could not get any credit for it. And I, I, I can't imagine how she would feel when she would throw out, you know, words to use or some new idea, you know, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Jonah dabs, you know. And next thing she know, he up on stage talking about, and the Jonah Dabs brothers, she's like, I gave him that. I gave him that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you got to love it. You got to love it. These people, boy, they, they just never stop. They just never stop. <laughs> but, I mean, once again, I it's – it go, I keep, we keep asking this ourselves when you talk about ourselves as where did these two come, come from? But like what you were saying at the beginning, uh, back in the day, you never, you didn't even know the names of the governing body members. I only knew about Frederick Franz, and I think it was Kevin Klein or something like that. You kept, you, you Carl Klein. Yeah, Carl Klein. Carl Klein. Yeah. Carl Klein. That was the only two names. And Nor. I yeah. think those are the only three names that I knew besides Russell and Rutherford. But yeah. like from uh, and even, you didn't even call them the governing body. That was the, the part of the faithful and discreet slave. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Call call. Klein, I, I found I finally found out when I was about I finally found out why all those years the Watchtower music sound like the way it sounded because of Carl Klein. It was Carl Klein. Carl Klein was a classical music lover. And as a result. That was why all the music at the Kingdom Hall sound like classical music. It sound like, which is, I, which, you know, it's really ironic. I remember talking to someone about mo, a lot of the classical music, you know, Bach and Beethoven and a lot of those guys who wrote, you know, they were all, many times they was often gay. And it's ironic that they dog everybody else with the bass music. You got to get rid of all your albums. And yet he's sitting back in his room listening to, to this, this, this type of music while he dogging everybody down the hall. <laughs> Cause they got ZZ Top, you know, that kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, the, the the double standard man is just crazy. It it, it really is. It, really it is. is. Okay, somebody <laughs> said that the governing body appointments are almost as secretive as Pope appointments. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, they, they I'm really curious uh, on on when when these guys got appoint, uh, appointed. I mean, uh, anointed because I, I'm. I, I'm from uh, the ones that speculate if you get a little call or a little meeting with the members of the governing body and they say, um, uh, brother, uh, I see here on your card that you are from the earthly calling. Uh, the governing body over here, we were praying and we would like you to put it in prayer this uh, tonight, you know, because you might be from the you heavenly might. calling. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> That's what my wife said. That's what my wife said. Don't you, have, then, don't you have certain feelings at night? That you yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, man. It, it, yeah. it, 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 it is amazing. That's what they call I, I remember, grooming. Go ahead. They're, grooming, they're grooming you for the they're position. Grooming, yeah. And they're wanting you to tell them that I am feeling something. Yes, I do feel that. I oh, feel something. Yeah, I feel you've been something. working here for like five years now, brother. So and so you do it so well. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel a little spirit moving you or something? Don't you feel that tingle? Don't you feel that tingle on the back of your leg? <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, it's That's interesting. When, when I was at Belton, we had like people who were of the anointed, guys who were of the anointed. And when they begin to start out with that, with that given one stuff, I looked at the lists of the names who went up there. And instead of them selecting people who, men who were already of the anointed right there at Bethel, and training them to be future governing body members, they reached out to people who were the same age, who was quote unquote, of the other sheep. And I cannot imagine how a person who was claiming to be of the anointed must have felt as he watched his brothers reach over and grab somebody else instead of grabbing him and grooming him. And so, but that's because as we now understand, all this stuff has nothing to do with nothing. It has nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, the heavenly calling supposedly ended in 1935. <laughs> and what what I was told was that uh, when these new, uh, younger, anointed ones came, they were going to replace the other ones that might have, you know, uh, going astray. And I but uh, man, how many of these people are just leaving the organization that are appointed to that you have to keep on coming up with new ones. That's right. Yeah. Well, somebody it, it, put it, a it, comment it, up here that says, I say? remember your video on all the seats in heaven are taken. Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. One. That's right. Yeah. And see with all those seats being taken. Now, when I was 
in the religion, in the, in the witness religion years ago, the way it went was like, if they had to, you know, uh, appoint somebody else uh, uh, in, in that position or one of the anointed, that meant that somebody fell away in heaven. And so it's like, how can you have all these perfect people falling away? It's just, it just doesn't add up. I mean, you know, so if you had like, what, what, 20 something thousand when we were still going and then it, it was, was it, it, it was, it was, it was like down to like 8,000. When we left, it was down to 8,000. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I mean, I would have, <laughs> I would have thought, I mean, I remember when they taught us uh, that, um, there were going to be only Jehovah is the only uh, immortal person, right? Because even the angels are not, uh, they are mortal. But that, that after all this, though, they're going to be more immortal people that will be Jesus and the 144,000. So if they're already up in heaven and they're falling, that doesn't make sense. That, well, well, see, remember, it was, it was supposed to be the replacements on earth. In other words, if someone, if, if someone became a new anointed one, somebody on some part of the earth became unfaithful and they had to be replaced. Exactly. Which, but I always found that hard to believe, man, because yeah. remember when we was growing up, the typical anointed person, man, is like 60, 70, 80 years old. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this guy been serving God for 55, 60 years and he gonna wait around to the last, he's 82 years old, now he wants to go to the strip club. And so it's like, <laughs> what? you got to be kidding me. And that's the way they played it. But now, man, they now have just dismissed all of them as crazy. They're like, they're all crazy. Yeah. Which, you know, and when it's, it's really sad because that raises a very important question. And, and I pose this to witnesses I've had, you know, dialogue with over the years. And once again, you can see the wheels begin to think. I said, when the Watchtower wrote that these people may have psychological problems, are you saying that God would not select someone who may be struggling with this issue, which is merely a reflection of imperfection? And you can see the witness sitting there like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that don't make sense that God would cut somebody short because they suffering from him. <laughs> and so, but, but see, that's because we have been conditioned as Jehovah's Witnesses to dismiss anyone who we consider, well, they, not, they don't have it all together. But that might be somebody, because if you look in the Bible, God always chose basically the underdog. Aaron said, I can't talk well. But God said, no, come on, I'm, 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 I need you, come on. Yeah. And but so you throughout the, you know, David, you know, all his brothers, big, big boys, big boys. And he was like, no, I want the little, the little, little strony guy. We, we go, we go work with him. You, you got to remember, JT, that um, when they know this is not really a real um, appointment, yeah. then they know that, yeah. you know, they yeah, know get, that yeah, we get not too a much real credit. situation. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, know. you got to be on the body. You probably got to be on the uh, governing body for them to talk about it. What yeah, we going to do now, y'all, you know, we, how are we going to keep this charade going, you know, you know. Yeah. And so, of course, if they did bring somebody on um, <clears throat> on the um, body that was, um, you know, a person that actually thought they were of the anointed, then they're not going to be able to tell them that, you That's know. True. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think yeah. they you're right. Them, you're you're right. To the program. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Yeah. I gotta give me the program. I, I think probably the best because people often say, well, how are governing body members selected? I think the best way to look at it is the way elders are selected in a congregation. It has very, very little to do with their outstanding example of the fruits of the spirit. That That is not what gets you on appointment as an elder. And the same thing with the governing body. Like those those two guys, can you, can you put those guys up? Those two guys, <laughs> these two guys right here, what you generally hear, and this is, you know, when I was at Bethlehem, this was, this, this was always the buzzword. It was always the buzzword. You would always hear someone refer to someone like uh, like Jeff and, 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 his, and his partner in crime, Gator. You would hear someone say, he's a good society man. He's a good organization man. You would rarely ever hear people who were moving, who you could see moving up the steps in the organization. You would rarely ever hear someone refer to that brother got the fruits of the spirit down to a science. I tell you, boy, nobody got the fruits of the spirit like that, brother. That is not how they refer to these guys. They refer to these guys as the boss, the general, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, this is how they refer to these men who are actually moving up the scale with terms just like that. And so these two guys here, die hard wool society men, die hard. As one brother said, oh, yeah. uh, one brother said, this: if the society says this book is blue, 
and it's red, I'm saying it's blue. These are the kind of guys who would say that. And oh, yeah. we've seen that same thing on the local level with elders. And it moves up the food chain, circuit overseer. You don't get into the circuit work unless you're a society man, branch man. You do what you're told. Don't ask no questions. They say, keep your head down low. Don't ask no questions. And that's how you get to where these guys are getting to. That's yeah, how you and, and But even uh, they have to be even more than just yes men. Oh, yeah. You ready? Because <laughs> these, these guys are the ones that are going to yeah. tell you what to do. Yeah. So you're going to tell you have they're going to have their own yes men. So I mean, how how bad can you be to get to yeah, for to, yeah. to get Tony Morris and his fellow uh, co-workers say, yeah, let's let's put these two guys on the seat right next to ours. Yeah. Well, you know, one one of the things that 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 <coughs> even when I was at Bethel, everybody knew this, and then Ray Franz just confirmed this because you would hear it. There would be what's called, you know, different factions on the different factions on the governing body. These three guys, they typically always vote together. These four guys, they typically always vote together. And, and so you would get this power struggle because there was always people on the governing body who literally wanted to drop the hammer on witnesses. I mean, pound, pound, pound. And then there was others who I'll give you a perfect example. I'll give you a perfect example. This is my personal experience. We had a governing body member. His name was um. Theodore Jarris. They used to call Jarris the general. This man was so organized. We used to sway out. If you looked in his top drawer, he would have his drawers laid out for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, we, I mean, we used to laugh about it. You know, his, him, on his calendar, he would have days planned when he would make love to his wife. We would laugh about this <laughs> because this guy was, he, he, I mean, he was, Theodore Jarris was Mr. Organization. Anybody who's ever met this man and worked with this man knows exactly what I'm talking about. On the other hand, you have governing body members who was more carefree, more laid back. Dan Sillick, he was an example of that. People liked Dan Sillick. He was a good people person. And people often remember Dan because of his voice. He would do the part of Pharaoh many times. Who is Jehovah? That I should listen. That was Dan Sillick, member of the governing body. He was very laid back. He would play softball with us in the factory. A governing body member put his little short pants on, come out there with his little, little tennis shoes on, with his little, his little white legs and got no sunshine on him. And he would actually come out and pitch for the different team. Because in the factory, you would play different teams. The electricians play the plumbers, the guys in the, in the factory on one floor play the guys on the other floor. And he would always come out and pitch, call his own pitches, but that was okay. He was well-liked. But other governing body members, man, these dudes, boy, they was, oh, man. And so you literally saw people's personality. You're like, boy, that's Christ's brother. Whoa, boy, that's a rough one. Now that you leave, you understand it's a business. And just it's like on your job and my job, you got managers that people enjoy being around. And you got managers that when they walk in the room, everybody gets afraid. They just get. Afraid. Oh, yeah. When I started working uh, like, like 10 years ago in, in the insurance business, that's one of the things that made me realize, like, how similar the Jehovah's Witnesses are to this. And that was that was I was all, all on my way to waking up. But that one of the, one of the things that helped me wake up yeah. was working in this type of business because I was in the sales department. And it, since it was pure commission, you're working for free. You don't sell. You don't do. You don't earn anything. So I'm like, what? Well, this is feels like when I was a pioneer. Like I'm just working for free. I'm not getting anything out of this. Yeah. So it, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's, it's, it is a it's, 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 it's probably one of the greatest scams in the world, man, to convince people to sell your books and don't have to pay them. That, that that's, yeah. that's that's a great scam. And now to, to contract your buildings and, uh, and not pay them. Not either. pay them, <laughs> man. And I I'm reading that comment there uh, that said that about What's it say? not, uh, saying uh, getting out of uh, high school. Man, my cognitive dissonance started the day. Of my graduation from high wow. school wow that's when i started and i wow. i still look back and i said like man that was in 89 why wow. didn't i just that's a just powerful leave? post at the bottom man i just i i, should, I just said wow. ask myself like why didn't i just go ahead and leave because i remember that day saying to myself where's the end yeah i was told that i i actually regular pioneered while i was in high school because i oh, was man, you so were good. convinced yeah, you were good. Yeah, I, I was convinced that the 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 quicker we preach, 
the quicker the end will come. Yeah. And 30 years later, man. Yeah, man, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. But we can be thankful that we were able to see it. Uh, the people who will watch the video will be posted. Many, so many of them will be saying the same thing. I am glad I am out of this thing. Oh yeah. And I now can finally breathe because we literally, we, we were just being smothered by this organization. And these are the men who are responsible for that smothering that we get from our family. We get from people who we consider friends because they are following these people because unfortunately the watchtower sells the greatest product in the world. And that's hope. Mm -hmm. And as long as people around the world struggle and have issues to deal with, they'll always want hope that things will be better. And boy, Watchtower will be right there just selling it to you, boy. A hundred, yeah. almost 150 years of selling a lie. I remember as they when say, they man, would say, a lie long enough, people believe it. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. And I, 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 I remember when they said that if you're happy and everything is okay, something's wrong because you're not being attacked by Satan. So like it, it, the more miserable you are, that means that you're doing the good thing. Yeah, yeah, you're you're a spiritual person. You're doing the right thing because then you're being targeted by Satan. So they they cover their bases well, man. Yeah, I mean, I remember like things like for the for example the overlapping generations. Yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people just don't accept it, but they're waiting for the new light. <laughs> and, What's the comment? I, I couldn't see the comment down the bottom. Put my shades. Put, put my shades on me. Put my glasses on. What, what's the comment? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> stop stop it stop it <laughs> oh man that is so true they said that the, the, the helpers would be this poster said that they hear me I, I had my, I oh, had you my read, thing read, on, read, read. i had my thing on mute could y'all hear me yeah now you can hear you, yeah. the anointed they're, they're gonna be um all the helpers got anointed <laughs> yeah, that is a great. That is a great. That hey, that's a great post. That that is a great post. Can't it's kind of hard, you know. It's it's kind of hard for me. I've got two computers here, and okay. I'm trying to read. And I can't see. That's a great <laughs> post. That that's a great post. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I just I I wonder how many people like believing Jehovah Witnesses are going to be affected negatively by these two. Yeah, uh, man. That, that that's a, oh man, that's an excellent point because these clowns are going to come up with some stuff on their own and they're going to push it out. As we say, mm -hmm. they're going to take that human opinion and it's going to get elevated to divine status. And down the road in a few years, these guys are going to be putting stuff in these magazines that witnesses are going to be following, thinking they're doing what God says. It's, 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 it's very painful. But like I, I said, the good, the good part is we were able to get out and with what we do and so many other people, uh, we have all the tools to help people that want to be helped. And if somebody wants to stay behind, that's going to be on them. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I remember, I recall, I don't know. I mean, I think it was Tony Morris that said in like one video or something that they, somebody had asked him that something about a new uh, governing body, aside from what they, there are, uh, the, the, the ones that are now and that he said that's not going to happen i just wonder where that video is because if anybody finds that video that's not going to age well ain't gonna age well at all <laughs> <laughs> i like this i'm finally living yep dig it oh dig yeah it. I, I could say I, I i could say that my wife and i have never been happier yeah yeah we we, we, we are so never been happier. It's, it's 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 the the stress of trying i mean we live all of us if we were if all of us who were trying to live up to what a Jehovah's Witness expectations are, we all were in that hamster wheel. All of us were in the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. I tell said, you, it's, it's, it's been they, good, man. I'm glad you joined us this evening. Right. And um, um, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah, I'm okay, going to read I'm this one here. It says, couldn't even sit at the table for a nice, friendly family meal without talking about yeah, the truth. They run... Boy. And own your entire life. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm, yeah. I'm. I don't see that anybody put anything in the private chat. Okay. That's. Does fine. anybody yeah. want to come online and say something? I saw somebody that had a comment and said oh, yeah. something about they had comments, some stories yeah. to tell. And if you want to send me a private message to come in on the chat, you could come and share your story. Oh yeah. We would Feel love free. to have Absolutely. you. I forgot his name. He um, he said that um, he was telling somebody to text him. 
and he would okay. share some stories. Oh yeah, so if, 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 you, yeah, want if you want to come on, feel free. Link, I mean, that's what this the, is all about. This, to, this, this yeah, is your you chance to say exactly to what you the think. To the, to the feed, feel free to come on. We'll we'll we'll, we'll put you up here. Absolutely. Send me your Shug. send me your email, and I will send you the link to the chat. I don't and, know if he's, and, I don't know if he's still on here or not. Okay. I was just trying because we told people you know just stop you know, we we told people you know we're just gonna be up for a little while and if you want to pop in pop out that's fine just 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 swing through um yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a nice over... friday night people got stuff to do <laughs> yeah, we, we <laughs> the, overdo it because you know, i know sometimes when i see you know somebody got like a two-hour uh live stream they want you to watch be like oh my god <laughs> you know so i said i didn't i mean because you know we're gonna start doing more live streams and trying to come out more because it's easier to come out and talk instead of trying to you know be in the studio recording it's just easier yeah. to come out and just talk right yeah you know but that comment there about you know? like uh, sitting down at a table like a nice friendly nice friendly family meal man i mean I, I i've seen so many families been completely destroyed yeah. completely destroyed by by this organization uh i i have a friend that it that he said look i i threw my son out of my house he was 14 and he and i haven't spoken to him in the last 30 40 years i think it was and he never he he, he never got over that and he said his son then i met his son and he was he he talked to me and said yeah i lived under a bridge and then some a restaurant owner adopt me and i uh, and that's how I, I i was able to survive and just a couple of years ago uh like five years ago right before we left the organization i have a friend that we've met, known each other since we were kids and i asked him like hey how's your daughter doing and he said no we gave her an adoption because she's, she doesn't want to be a jehovah's witness anymore oh, man. so we we they she got baptized at 12. At 14, she says, I don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore. The parents helped her write the letter of this association and gave her an adoption because they had to protect the, the rest of the family. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. crazy. They should have been yeah. put in jail. Yeah. I don't know. I've never heard that. of them again because, you know, that after that we left. But that was just as recent as five years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. See, that's just because you know what? When you do, you Tammy, know when you, 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 see, you see the child, comment Tammy made. That's very. That's a very true statement. Yeah. That is so true. The the tool of fear. There, there are so many. There are so many people who will watch this video that we're doing right now. There are so many people who will go to the Kingdom Hall, and they are literally living in fear. Yeah. They want to say something, but the ramifications. The Watchtower makes the price so high that the fear literally paralyzes people. And um, I mean, we've talked to so many people over the years and we just tell them, look, here's the good news. Once you realize this is not the truth, you can literally take a lot of that stuff off your, off being burdened. Cause like stuff like, right. like you know, even though they, you know, right, right now they mess around with the field service time, but, we, but we've been telling you for years, look, they ask you how many hours you got. I got about four or five and just keep it moving because the numbers are bogus. I know people who would just, they would just get tied up in the knots when the elder or the secretary would call him. I hear that, Sister Johnson, just call and see if you got any time. Yeah, brother, I got about five or six hours, two magazines. All right, then, good to talk to you. Tell your wife I say hello. We got to get together again <laughs> and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Oh, I lied and, about my time for the last 15 years. I chief, was in the organization. <laughs> it's all bogus, man. I mean, it's literally bogus. I mean, I, I would, I would literally go out in service with my wife twice a year during the circuit overseer visit the rest of the months were they would just call me and i would make up something at the but like yeah two hours each <laughs> man i know i know so many i know i, I know so many secretaries man they'll be they'll be at somebody's they be they be it's, it's the last of the last day of the month right and they they, they behind they should have done the time they got to turn in by the fifth it used to be and so they're like I ain't got time to call. I'm just gonna put two hours. I, I know she. I know she talked to somebody, and they would just keep this <laughs> and keep it going. That's what my just dad going, said. Man. Keep he it said going. the brothers would call him, and he said the brother said, "Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you must have talked to somebody for a couple of hours." <laughs> and he would just yeah, put I him out like two hours. There. <laughs> I know. I know you talked to probably you know the doctor or somebody, and but that, that's where it was. At least that one that that was a nice elder because the elders from our congregation, we got a, like every other month, 
uh, uh, brother, uh, can we talk to you after the meeting? And we had to explain where we got those two hours because they didn't see us out during the weekend. So they were I'm like, like literally, it's like, what? we need you okay. to explain those two hours. Ephraim, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. We had a regular pioneer in our congregation. <laughs> And we never saw her in field service. I'm not lying. <laughs> she had Bible studies and everything. She had us going over people's house for. Remember that guy she had us calling on JT? I'm not lying. Yeah, was she trying, was, was, she was a regular pioneer. She worked a full time job. Yes. Wow. And um, we never saw her out in service, and they never questioned her. No. Hey, look at look at look at what the CEO visitor said. Oh man, he just knocked it out of the park. He knocked it out of the park. <laughs> he knocked it out of the park. <laughs> In service, we tell everyone to read the Bible. The Bible is the authority. <laughs> Once you're in, though, it's quite a different story. It's quite different. <laughs> yep. You got to read oh, the man, Watchtower. That's... Back then, the Awake magazine. you're sick, man. But you're on, you, <laughs> hey, you on point, man. You, you, brother, you're on yeah. point. Yeah. I'm trying yeah, to go through so some we, of these we, we, we push I'm the Bible. Then once we get them in, it becomes a Watchtower. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying like to it. entertain some of these comments. I don't, okay, I don't want to leave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we won't leave nobody out. We won't leave nobody out. Um, so um, I I remember an elder because back back when I was a, a pioneer, it was 90 hours. Yeah. And I was always short, like 87, 86. Like, and I had an elder. He said, like, just put 90. And I, ne I never did. I should have done it because that would have saved me a lot of headaches. <laughs> See, these guys, are, I'm going to tell you, the audience, the audience is off the chain. The audience is off the chain tonight, man. <laughs> It, it, it's, 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 it's funny, but it's not funny. It's just it's just when you it's just when you look at it now, it's like, man, like like this post here. You know, we we do, we dog the Mormons because they have their Book of Mormons, which is in addition to the Bible. Yeah. And, yeah. And some posts, yeah. You know, uh, uh, Brian, Brian said, Brian said, look, man, the shepherd of the flock is the additional book of the Bible. <laughs> and that's true, man. I mean, the the the, the elders book, man, that thing. In fact, in fact, it supersedes the Bible. Yeah. Because that's where you go to. Yeah. If you're an yeah. elder, you don't turn to the Bible. You turn to the flock book. Yeah. And the flock book is going to tell you what you need to know from the Bible. <laughs> exactly. It's like um, in the book, uh, uh, Security or something in the the Prince of Peace. <laughs> That it says that that Jesus is only the mediator between God and the one hundred and forty four thousand. Yep. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Man. That's not in the Bible. There's, there's a there's a watchtower that 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 it says they actually inserted uh, a statement into the in, during the watchtower lesson. They actually put something clean. You know, between God and man, they put some men <laughs> crazy. This is a good one here. This is this this is this is something that, that that we all grew up on. Follow the slave. Yeah, follow the slave. Yeah, we we yeah, follow the slave. That that's that now it's mainly follow the branch. But yeah, but that that and and these things, if you were to take a Jehovah's Witness, sit them down, put watchtower, slave, Bible, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and you ask them any question, they would view it all the same if any of those entities said it. They would not question it. Mm -hmm. The Bible said it, Jesus said it, God said it, the slaves said it, you know, the government, they, they would see no difference whatsoever. None, none. Yeah. Johansson yeah, says yeah. about the babies are God little yeah, enemies. That was, that was, that was crazy. That was crazy. I mean, but I, was I, crazy. I gotta be honest. Like, I, I think sometimes, you know, I think sometimes, Lady C, that they will, they will be on stage and they want something to say dramatic and they'll just they'll just come because you know that was not in the outline probably but they just want to say and they'll just throw out red meat to the at Jehovah's that moment Jesus. at that moment jt that's when those two brothers were being anointed yeah the two new governing <laughs> body members they said we got to get these jokers out of here <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh that's my god but the thing is that i'm i'm glad that the governing body showed their face yeah i am that's too. that's where and i woke up because I gave myself permission to start uh, doing research after listening to Jeffrey Jackson say that it will be presumptuous to call themselves the only truth. I'm like, what? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I looked at my brother who was already out. And I said, "Give me that book, uh, yeah. the Ray France book." I, 
Yeah. I'm going to read it now. That 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 was any Jehovah's Witness, especially any Jehovah's Witness kid who knew that they were taught you take a stand for the truth regardless of what you punish, what punishment you get in school. To see this grown man at the top of the organization on this worldwide stage, you would have, I thought he would have at least said, Your Honor, you may not agree with me, but yeah. we believe that we are the brothers of Christ. Yeah. And we have been asked to speak in his behalf. You would have thought he would have said that at least. At least he got but this told is the judge, oh, man, come on, man. You know I'm not that arrogant to sit here and talk about I'm the mouthpiece of God. Me and my yeah, boys. Man. We get together, we the mouthpiece of God. You but, know that but, ain't true. But That's you know that. And I'm yeah. like, this is crazy. I'm thinking to myself, every little Jehovah's Witness kid is like, he's lying. Yeah. He's lying. <laughs> but the thing is that you know that, that we were taught that someday that was going to happen, that we were going to be taken uh, uh, in front of all the nations and we we're going to yes. be to the court and everybody would know that we were the truth and we were God's only organization. So when I'm seeing this, I'm like, okay, here it is. He's going to say it now. This is the truth. You got to come in. And when he said that, I I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. Yeah. I was completely yeah. embarrassed. I could not believe what he just said. Cyber just posted something that's very important. I um and I and, I, and I'm glad Cyber did it. Uh he just he just kind of put a puncture mark on what I mentioned. Uh we encourage every one of you, if you ever get a chance, take a look at what Cyber just mentioned. He said, go and watch, a, and there are lots of them on, on, on the internet, go watch any documentary on multi-level marketing organization, mm -hmm. and you will say to yourself, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Watch any the, video on sales training. Yeah, yeah, you can do it, yeah. Actually, it's funny. There's a, The Watchstar has this book. It's called Qualified to be Ministers. If you read the book Qualified to be Ministers, because I remember someone, had, they, they were in sales like you, and they said, man, it's like a sales training manual. Yeah. <laughs> How about reasoning the, the the book reasoning with the um, uh, overcoming objections section Objects, and all yeah. that? That's sales, that's sales. sales training manual, man. Sales training, <laughs> yeah, a sales training manual. <laughs> but that, yeah, the Watchtower looks this. It moves just. I mean, it's it is a business. That's yeah, it's a, it business. a business. I mean, it is literally a business. These boys dropped two billion dollars in property uh, onto the real estate market, and they walked away clean. Because their their church, because it's a church, there's probably no tax on it because they're church. Exactly. So they walked away with two billion clean, man. Two it's billion like clean. W w after the Hurricane Maria, that they renovated like 50, 60 uh, kingdom halls in Puerto Rico, and then they just put it uh, uh, in on sale. Oh yeah, uh, cat lady, see, could you mention the 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 the, the um the protest? I, I remember. Didn't didn't did, did, did Oh someone... yeah. So, you know, I haven't had a chance to do this yet, but um, one, one late young lady sent me an email to to uh, put this out on our channel. They're going to be having a protest. I think it's going to be October. Is it 31st uh, uh, this year? Yeah. And it's going to be down. If, if, in if anyone's online, they got the information. Could you just drop it into 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 yeah. into the into the chat? And yeah. um, we, I meant to mention that. Yeah. They're going to be doing a protest mm -hmm. here in D.C. Mm -hmm. Okay, and those this protests work because I have a friend that he was uh, he went to the same congregation that I went to in Mayaguez English in Puerto Rico, and he was visiting the hall, uh, the the branch the day that they had some pro that there was a protest and they turned on the sprinkler system on uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 the yeah. protesters. He yeah. was there, yeah. and mm -hmm. he approached them and asked them some questions. He said, "I immediately woke up." Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Really. I mean that that's and that, that, that shunning up. thing, man, um, is is powerful. And 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 a lot and, and and we understand a lot of in a lot of countries, uh, governments try to kind of stay away from getting too much involved with religion. But the problem that the Watchtower is running into is they're getting the and, and I tell people, even if there's no law passed, the most important thing takes place, which is what the Watchtower hates, and that's bad publicity. The, the, the Watchtower is obsessed with their brand, their mm -hmm. brand, keeping Jehovah's name clean, you know, you know, which which really means keeping Watchtower clean. That's what it really means. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when people can see just how Jehovah's Witnesses are behind the curtain, man, it's, it's, it's priceless. There is no price when you can have a non-Jehovah's Witness see the other side 
of this organization. There is nothing like it in the world. Oh, yeah. Like right. the, 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 this comment here that this is a different religion. Yeah, this is a completely thing. Oh, it's a yeah. completely different religion than when I came when I came in. Yeah. <laughs> From now, like, man. And the thing is that you cannot question any of the changes. Like he said, but you that's not why you sold me. Yeah, yeah, but that's what you get now. That's what, you get. You that's what you get now, though. <laughs> if, if you don't like it, we'll just yeah. go ahead. We'll disfellowship you, and we'll. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's your family like, and, we, we, and in our in our community here. We have like a McDonald's. They came in. They shut the McDonald's down for three or four months. They did all the new renovations. We got a Wendy's. They did the same thing to a Wendy's, and so they have put on this new outward appearance. But deep down inside, they still sell the same burgers and same nasty fries or whatever. And same with the watch. <laughs> they can they can change all their outward appearance they want to. Fancy Kingdom Halls, little blue bin, little blue pins with JW.org. They can do all of that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at this very core, it is the same organization. We got a group of guys here in the United States that everybody around the world must listen to or God's going to kill them. That is the core that will never change. And I always, when I'm talking to non-Jehovah's Witnesses in the presence of a Jehovah's Witness, I always make sure I let them know. Is not your bottom line that you have eight guys in the United States and if people don't accept their explanation and these little pamphlets, what do you believe is going to happen to people who don't do that? And the witness just gets so embarrassed. It's just so embarrassed because they can't sit there and say, you're going to die home again. They can't tell their cousin that. They can't tell their coworkers that. Even they know it's crazy. Right. Yeah, and, and and I'm glad that you mentioned the little pen. I mean, I, that would have been a really nice thing to have back in the day because, I mean, I would be out there. Uh, sometimes we'll be out 10 hours and come back with two hours preached. Uh, but with that little thing there, you don't stop counting time just because you have it oh, on. Oh, Ephraim, keep don't on tell counting me you were going all to the time. donut shop. I'm on the clock. You I'm on the clock at all time, brother. I'm on the clock. Oh yeah, the we were going to going the donut, to the donut shop. shop. Or um, we we was so you crazy, I was, man. I was you crazy. Rural territory. Where I'm from in Michigan, we were like in the rural, so we would get our our time started at the gas station, and then we would drive to the other end of the territory, and uh, then we would come back. You know, we had a good old time. All, but when, I, when we were in the English congregation, it was different because in the English congregation, since you had to travel a lot, you will count that time. But when I was in the Spanish congregation, it was hard. Every time you stop, you will stop the clock. I'm like, man, I, if I would have known back then, I would just keep the clock running. Yeah. You, That's a very it, stressful it, life because chicken, when you're chicken, thinking chicken about counting time you all the time, here, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't sit here and you engage Jehovah's Witnesses an idea. There go, there's go, you can rest assured there's gonna be some Jehovah in somewhere who's walking around with his badge on saying I'm still out in service. Oh yeah, all. there's still I'm 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 counting time because I got this on. I'm the I'm the billboard. Yeah. Man. Now and what the, the, the that comment over there, man. I I know a, a person, he he ended up even even being a circuit overseer. Uh but he he told me that he has this, this internal struggle because oh, yeah. of of his sexual orientation. Oh yeah, and yeah, when still, I, when... Still, I, 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 the point he made was very good because w one of the things that the I, I just love every time Jehovah's Witnesses or, or governing body members get into this area, I love when they start getting into the area of reading people's hearts. Mm -hmm. That that has always been a problem in this organization. As, as, as he mentioned, you know, he was talking about you know a person who maybe gay is going to die and then he's going to come back on the other side. He be he be still be gay. Well, see the thing of it is. He has actually determined what is in somebody's heart. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's what the crazy part is, is that they actually believe they you remember when they did the thing about people coming back from Sodom? They mm -hmm. said yes, they're coming back. No, they're not coming back. Yes, they come yeah. back. They, they, yeah, yeah, they kept and, switching. And so what they did, and because we did a video on speculation, they love to speculate to make it appear as if we know something that you don't know. Exactly. And we're gonna tell you because you don't know this, and it's all just speculation. Yet anybody else who speculates, you get condemned. You, you get, get in condemned. trouble. You get in trouble. And get the thing is, with, with that little uh, talk about that, Stephen, that it was like many people that have this orientation, they will think, OK, so I'm going to be cured as soon as Armageddon, you know, hits and I'll, I'll be cured. I'm not, I'm not going to feel this way. And he says, like, no, you're going to still feel the same way. And you have to decide if you're going to 
be a, a be gay or not be gay. And Man, it, this, it, this, this this paradise project that Jehovah's Witnesses have been selling for 150 years is very very sad, man. Um, so many of us we made our life decisions based on believing we was going to get into the paradise. We thought we were going to be able to play with you know the the, the bears and the tigers and <laughs> they 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 gypped us, man. They they okay. I, I tell people all the time, man. We, they they sold us basically a beachfront property timeshare for week 53. And we can't figure out why we never get to use the timeshare. It's week 53. When you think about how many people have died since this religion started, believing, I mean, sincerely believing, I'm going to see it before I die. And now Jehovah's Witness have reached a point, well, it don't really matter now. You know, I'm just going to be faithful to the end. But see, it used to be they knew when the end was coming in their generation. They just snatch stuff away from these people and just leave them out there dangling on the clothesline. I mean, and it's, it's really sad because and we have a buddy right now. He has an aunt. She was she attended the 1958 convention, 250,000 people in New York City, 58. And she's still holding on. I'm going to see the new system. She spent her entire life hawking these work. The books that she the books and magazines that she plays. Back then, today are worthless, and the witness oh, yeah. never, the, the Jehovah's Witness never stops to think: How could something that was spiritual food from God yesterday be trash today? We never stop to think about that. We never yeah. stop to think about it. And if you teach, because if it's like, like let's say that I say, you know what, I'm not going to teach that overlapping generations. I'm going to stick with what the, what I learned. Then, well, oh, you're an apostate, bro. You're an apostate. <laughs> Because you're teaching the old stuff. It's like, but I'm teaching why you guys served me. Like, nope, you're an apostate. Oh, look at this. And you know yeah, what, too, this... Ephraim? It don't trucker, take long. Trucker is, trucker's on, on point. A lot, yeah, look at trucker. A lot, of the, a, lot of the, um, a lot of the teachings are starting to get old quicker. Like, you know, yeah, it used to be like it's crazy. 10 or 15 years. It took, the, took it to they get out of the But it's like now, two or three months later. And they they they, they, they passing up like milk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your, your iPhone is going to last longer. Play. <laughs> well, hey, man, as always, it's, it's always good uh, for people to, to be able to realize this is not the truth. And, yeah, and so I mean, we, we, we just wanted to, to come out this evening and, and just just share some thoughts um, and, and, and just tell people, look, you know, just keep 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 grinding, keep grinding. Uh, we yeah. did not make the we did not make a bad decision. And we can see all of these different types of confirmations. Um, I, I I really feel, I, I sometimes I tell my wife I think back to some of the guys I left at Bethel they're still there man wow we 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 have we have people we have known man for decades these boys are still trying to get into the traveling work wow they still they still pawning so they ain't got no money no retirement because because you can't have any debt because you get that letter you got thirty days to get prepared to go into the traveling work they just waiting they don't sign got... up and they just waiting for their call they waiting to get their new car. And man, it's yeah. like you know what they don't we, use you like a dog, man. They use we knew boy. this, yeah. I mean, we knew this uh, old uh, couple that were um, circuit overseers, and on one of their visits, the the wife she comes up to me and said, "Can I talk to you?" And I said, "Okay, yeah." He said, "Well, we we had this little business," and she said, "Can you guys give me a job?" Wow. Be like because she was what she was trying to do is that she had to complete the necessary credits to get her social security and there were yes about, we, we did the video on the credits yeah yeah so and and so she was trying to do that so she was asking me for a job but our business wasn't big enough to do that so i spoke with one of the elders in the congregation that he had a huge business and i said look look uh this is what's going on and and he didn't like it then i i had to vouch for them and i said look these are people that have dedicated their life to the full uh uh you know in full capacity and if they retire right now they don't get a retirement pension anything from the watchtower so we should appreciate that i'm, I'm talking to him about that like i'm and because i vouched for them he gave her like this pretend thing so that she could complete her credits and get her social security because he was uh he was not an american citizen he i mean uh he was from germany so he wasn't getting anything from that 
And it's sad that you dedicate your entire life in that capacity and get nothing. And you guys did a video on that. Yeah. I mean, it, and even myself, man. I mean, I, 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 I get my statement from Social Security, man. And it, yeah. and it shows those years at Bethel. Because Zero. it started out when I got to Bethel. They were putting stuff into Social Security. But they they started to vow poverty while I was at Bethel. And so my oh. remaining years, zero. And one of my boys, man, me and him, me and him flew to New York together. He's still at Bethel, man. Wow. This boy has about 20 plus years of just zeros. <laughs> if he manages to wake up, he, Gee, he'll he have to just hurt. stay Gee, there. He's going to be hurt. Oh, he's going to be hurt. Yeah, he, he will have to just stay. I, I guess some, some yeah. of those people in Bethel that just say, you know what? I just have to ride the wave. Even That's if all I they can do now. That's all they can do now. Yeah. I woke up, but I'm still. I'll well, just tell you. keep leaking That's information amazing. to the activists. Did you know the, um, hey, Ephraim, did you know the um, uh, missionary couple in Puerto Rico? Um, Which one of them? It, I, the Mize, Samuel and Yufa. I believe so. I believe okay. so. That uh, those those names um, ring a bell. Yeah, go way back. Samuel yeah, and Yupa Maya. Yeah. Maya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, the one that the one the guy that I admired a lot was Ronald Parkin. The, the I don't know if you. I mean, he he has been in Puerto Rico since forever. He's British, and he was really funny. Um, he passed away a couple of years ago. But uh, mm -hmm. after you learn the, the truth about this organization, it's like, man, how, how can you spend 80 years in this organization and know, like, when, he was the district overseer back then. I think he was even zone overseer. So you know the in and outs of the organization. You lived through 1975. You know mm -hmm. all about uh, the child abuse. You know everything. And you're still there. Oh, man. Yeah, it's and, amazing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Really and you is. spend that wow. I, for me, like uh, the trucker that I, we, my wife and I never had children. We didn't go. I had, I had a full college. Didn't go. I mean, we sacrifice everything for this organization. And so, I mean, I'm still happy that we're left. We're happier than ever. We're doing better than ever. But it's sad how much you sacrifice for this organization. And I feel sad, bad for people that are still inside that uh, it's just if you. If it's you painful. Watch, it's very if, painful. It's very if, painful. Anybody that's thinking about it and stumbling about around uh, on this video is like, you know, what? don't don't think about it anymore. Just just leave. Just leave. Do your it's homework. easier do you, to leave. Do your it's homework. It's easier to leave now homework. and recoup the life that you could have had. Than yeah. to stay and realize that you're not gonna ever recoup anything like that. Yeah. Like that sister, that that couple that needed that those credits to get their um, yeah. social security. That's a bad, bad feeling. Yeah. yeah. And those are the so, so, uh, circuit overseers for a long, uh, for a long time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. We 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 know that we know the stories. Unfortunately, we know the stories. It's terrible. I can't believe it's already nine thirty. You guys. Wow. Isn't that Oh my God, time goes by fast, doesn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I could, I could, I just couldn't get you know um, everybody in here, but I did see Joe, Joe Dyer. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. <laughs> he said he pulled twenty-two hours. <laughs> oh man, my God, pulling that, pulling, pulling that long money, that long money. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that, that, it was just it's so funny much. that the spirituality you're you're as spiritual as the amount of hours that you put in. And now the, choir, the requirements keep getting lower. So, like, it doesn't take a lot to be spiritual now. No, it, it does not it take don't. a lot. <laughs> it don't. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So glad we're gone. Oh, and everybody's yeah. glad they're gone, too. You know? Yeah. A Definitely. nice, nice way. So we're going to be having more people. We're going to be having more district conventions in the X community than we're going to be having in the uh, current, you know, active witnesses. There's so many people leaving. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, the, uh, the the more these governing body members show their faces, the more people are just gonna keep pouring out. Because I I just hear a lot of people. I mean, I I'm I was one that as the the governing body was were the ones who helped me wake up. 
just listening to their craziness. I was I was sitting in the audience listening to uh, Tony Morris tight pan talk, and we just left that. That was during a uh, an annual meeting. And Samuel heard he was talking about all these. He he was just mocking the Bethelites for being late in the morning worship and something like that. We did not enjoy that at all. Right. Yeah, they used to dog us. They they used to dog us like they dog the friends. They uh, how circuit overseers would compare circuit to circuit, the congregation to congregation, and stuff like that. They used to compare us branch to branch. Oh um, yeah. They yeah, used you to compare do that with the congregation. The brothers in the branch over here, you know, they work and they don't complain. Y'all, y'all, they all complain about having to work, you know, 10 minutes of extra, you know, that kind of stuff. Th this idea of always having you competing against a fellow Christian yeah. is the way the organization works, which is what a sales organization does. Exactly. It's so, like the circuit yeah. over here. Oh, this so and so congregation has 20 pioneers. And then, then this congregation, you got one. Like, what's going on in this congregation? Thanks, Tammy. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. But I mean, oh, yeah. we'll we'll put like a um a link on our Facebook yeah, page sure we'll, and we'll, we'll tweet it out page, so that people, you know, that if they, you know, if they visit our page and stuff, they'll they'll get the information because Absolutely. I think she, I think she did send me an email and I just haven't had a chance to go through it and put it up there yet because okay. we get so much correspondence. It's just so busy, you know. So, yeah. And we want to just thank everybody, you know for um coming out this evening um yes. and uh thank you for your contributions as well um yes thank everything you so is always appreciated um renee mason yeah todd henry todd henry i gotta reach out to him thank you so much todd we love you family from detroit <laughs> <laughs> you know and um detroit and, in the house <laughs> right and um i think the blind there, there was somebody that said the blind somebody Okay. They they um the blind yeah, I, man I, I, and, the, I, I, and, the, saw, and his yeah, wife. Yeah. We want to thank y'all and um yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, no comments here. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it was Tammy that said that she fifty years in the organization and walked out the door just like nothing. Wow. Wow. That was good. That was good. That was good. That that's that's that, that that's really that's good. unusual. That's unusual. I know. I I know. Uh, a brother that a former brother i don't call him brothers anymore i know like, we, we, we use the word so much it's, it's just, I, at, at this point in my life man I, when people yeah. like JT, he, man please give me a break move on move yeah. on man you got to have that crazy so but uh he was like 50 years uh in and he when when my first video mm -hmm. came out uh that um uh john ledger interviewed me so he saw it and he immediately called me like, can I talk to you? And he's like, oh, I just want to ask you some questions. But he was really cautious, but he he was mentally out. Yeah. And he said like, yeah, 50 years and and I'm fading because of the family and whatnot. But he he's completely out. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. I mean, after 50 the, the, years. The whole key is all a person needs is the confirmation. Once they get the confirmation, they're not, they're good, they're done. It's just a matter of them, how they're going to leave physically and, and how they're going to get their affairs in order and how they're going to deal with family and relatives. But the minute that they get that confirmation, this ain't the truth, man. It's it's, it's checkmate. It's, as they yeah. say, drop the mic, drop the mic, drop yeah. the mic. And it can yeah, be really. painful. I mean, we understand that can be painful. My mom, for mm -hmm. example, she she woke, she's a, a, a PMO. She's still inside because of uh, part of the family. Oh, but yeah. She's mentally out. But when she woke up, she called me bawling. She was crying like I, I would have just told her that somebody died. Like, yeah, it, it was well, really somebody did. painful. So some, it, 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 it's like death. Yeah, and she she I almost mean, had a, like we, a nervous we literally breakdown. saw a house of cards fall down. Yeah, she almost yeah. had a nervous breakdown right there. Wow. And I'm like, you know, how long has I, she been I, out? How long has she been woke? Just a couple of years. Wow. Okay. I would say because I I woke up in eight, 2018. Uh, so she woke up maybe maybe a couple of years after me. And do you have look, any look, siblings? Look at look at look at T look at TW. See what TW wrote. Do you have any siblings? What's are you laughing at them? How, how do you how do you get on the convention program? Sell <laughs> so oh, your house. house is <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I said, y'all cutting up tonight, boy. Y'all, y'all, y'all. She, man, I tell you, boy, when you when you let ex, when you let ex Jehovah's Witnesses loose, man, they they be cutting up, boy. <laughs> oh yeah. But it's true. Yeah. It's so true. You yeah. they will put yeah. you on the assembly to tell that story, and then everybody will look at you like, so you gonna sell your house next, brother? I, I'm just renting. You got your own house. You gonna sell it? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I I I knew uh, the like this elder. He was uh, rebuilding his house, and they were they man they destroyed that brother that that elder like oh he has no faith this and that that was like 30 years ago yeah mm -hmm. but yeah uh, to, cool. to your question lady see yeah i i have uh one brother he serves in uh chile uh oh. he as a regular pioneer and wow. uh elder with his wife as a regular pioneer and his daughter who got baptized like at nine or eight and the year later, she's regular pioneering. So she, a uh, regular pioneer, like ten years old, and regular pioneer. Oh, homeschool, of course. Yeah. Oh uh, my the, god! And so cookie dough. You see what cookie dough said, Kath, Lady C. Uh -huh. You see what mm -hmm. cookie dough said. This is something that we have often encouraged people to do. Yeah. Um. If there's nothing, if you leave this organization, and 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 I, I put the challenge out to everybody right now. If you have left this organization and you, you know, you're, you're comfortable putting your, you know, being seen, you know, we, we, we understand, do not come out until you're ready. Because once you. you make the move, you can't reverse it. But mm -hmm. if you're at the point where you're like, you know what, I'm moving on. We highly encourage you. Take your camera, sit down, tell your story, and at least post one video, video. on YouTube. If at it's the only one. video that you have on YouTube, post it up there telling your story mm -hmm. because people need to see that they are not alone. Yeah. This has been the Watchtower's most powerful tool when it comes to this fellowship with people, making you feel you by yourself and you mm -hmm. need us. When you post and people click on your link and you tell your story, there is somebody who will see your post and your, 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 your story. And they will say, that's me. Mm -hmm. That is me. So oh, you know, yeah. I, I I agree with Cookie Dough 150. percent You know, leave your story behind. You know, if 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 you know, we we may not be able to 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 get back all the things that we lost in Watchtower, but I tell you one thing: as I tell you all the time, uh, on the way out, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna leave a streak of fire behind, and that's why we do our channel. Yeah. You know, we you know we we want to make sure that people know. Look, don't do what we did, please. Before you right. do what we did, at least think about it. At least yeah. consider A, B, C, and D. That's all. And that's all we ask people. You know, we you can't tell somebody what to do. But I always say we're consumers of products, services, and ideas. And before you buy the idea that the Watchtower is selling, do what a good consumer does. They check out Yelp. They check out Google. They check out Glass, you know, with glass Door. I mean, they, they, they check out things. Yeah. Do the same thing with this religion. Don't just walk in this religion blind. Please don't do that. Oh, my goodness. Don't do yeah, that. I, 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 that helped me a lot. Yeah, like I, I found you guys because I was looking for stories about ex Bethelites. So the first person <laughs> I got, I found was uh, a fifth. Yeah, and I, good man, I, so good man. Because and since he was just uh, air, doing interviews, I felt comfortable because at the beginning you're shaking, you're like, oh, I shouldn't be watching this apostate material. So he's not, <laughs> he's not talking about anything. He's not say, using the word cult. He's not doing anything like that. So he's just interviewing people. And I'm just listening to these people that were ex bethelites and what was going on in 1975 and all, and Susan Gaskin and all this stuff. And, and then you guys, and I'm like, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. And the you realize that you weren't crazy after all. Yeah, right? you realize you're, I, I think that's probably the biggest thing is when you realize I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm not oh, crazy. I, at all. Oh, I remember. I remember when I, the, I remember clearly when I said, this is not the truth. Yeah. And man, it was like, I felt so good about it because I didn't feel sad. I mean, I, I felt bad that I wasted 32 years of my life, but I feel really good. For me, it was a relief. That I For my down. wife, it was a relief. Uh, it was a relief. Having to live up to standards that don't exist. That don't exist. And that was probably the biggest relief. Um, Jesus said that my load is light. And if you are honest as one of Jehovah's Witnesses and you ask yourself, why is my load light? 
and you start listing the things that are part of your load, you will find that those are the things that the organization put on you the same as yeah. the Pharisees put on people. I mean, it becomes so clear. It's like, man, this my problems come from all this stuff the organization got me doing. Ain't got nothing to do with Jesus, God, and the Bible. Nothing. Well, you know, that was my biggest complaint. And I, yep. I never saw a lot of things didn't make sense to me. And because I was so vocal, that's probably the reason why people were always looking at me at the corner of their eye. They probably thought I was an apostate back there. I didn't say nothing bad, but I, I didn't go along with the with the watchtower. She be asking too many program. questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. I just did I just I didn't it didn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, and I, I remember this uh the older lady from the congregation that she she will tell about uh, oh that this young kid that he was asking questions and he didn't um like this thing i don't like this teaching about the organization so he left and three years later there was new light and they changed it to what he thought it should have been and you like he you see you didn't you needed to wait for jehovah uh, and he didn't wait for jehovah so it's like oh man come on now Okay. Yeah. Oh, JT, yeah so just, sorry, my camera, my camera, my camera went out on me. I was gonna oh, yeah. say, what happened to JT? Yeah, my camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and and so that, and that's the belief a lot. Like a lot of the the witnesses think that way. Like, uh, well, if I just wait a little bit longer, then there's gonna be new light. Yeah. And that was one of the things that you don't realize after you leave that you need to, if you read the Bible just on its own, you realize that things like that new light. Uh, text it has nothing to do with prophecy or it has nothing to do with changes in the future it's it has something it has a completely different context the uh, different of what the jehovah witnesses teach yeah that's so true yeah. absolutely all right so i don't let me see if anybody came into the private oh shoot um let's see okay so oh jt left me some comments <laughs> all right y'all so i think we did we did pretty good. I, I went past my, my allotted time. We um, <laughs> were like a, an hour and 45 minutes, but hey, this has been fun. This has been real. And I think we got 415 people still online. So wow. that must be a good sign because if yeah. they were tired, they would have probably dropped off a long time ago. So it's yeah, okay. We're gonna, we're, we're, yeah. yeah. We, we okay. thank everybody for... Well, we, we like I said, we realize it's a Friday night and people might got stuff they want to do, but thanks for coming by, guys. I mean, just, yes. just thanks so much. And, and Ephraim, for those who and for those so who put too. comments in, thanks a lot for those comments. I mean, y'all guys, y'all guys just knocked that thing out of the park. I mean, every <laughs> and, and see, this is the whole thing. Everybody is writing, and this is what I tell people all the time. This is not something that you heard, this is not something that you read. This is something you live. And nobody can tell you what you live when it came to this organization. And that's why when someone steps to me, I mean, this is me personally. When someone steps to me, I just laugh. I'm like, man, I live this. So I don't need you talking about anything. I live this. So, right. and that's the way it is for most of us ourselves. We live this. We stood outside the third room, third grade classroom while they, while they celebrated inside. We, we, we were laughed at when we came back in. So I don't need nobody trying to tell me something about this religion. Man, please get out of my face. You're, you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, I live this stuff. And so, I mean, and, and so, I mean, it's, it, to, I mean, I find it insulting. I find it literally, I'm sure I find it insulting when somebody come to me and say, man, I don't really like that. Please. I was mm -hmm. there. Don't tell me where I live. And um, so when people can share what they live, they can speak from their heart. And so, like I said, this is not one person who posted up here was posting hearsay. Some they exactly. got third hand, fourth hand. I lived it. I yeah. saw it. Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> like uh th this uh I had this coworker that she was uh uh we were we were talking and it turned out that she it was one of Jehovah's Witnesses and she's trying to because I I I told her like I'm not any anymore that's a long story but uh, the thing is that she comes up and says like oh um you don't know what you're talking about I've been a witness since nine uh since uh 2015 and like girl i was baptized in 1986 
don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, somebody, that's somebody was telling upside you. the head. Boy, you want somebody that usually want to slap him upside the head, man. I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like your oh, boasting foolish. that you were, were you got in in night uh, the 2015. Oh, come on now. I was in eight eighty six last See? century. <laughs> Exactly. Right. <laughs> I was in the 20th century. I want to say yeah. this real quick. Can I just say this to the children? I, I think we got our signals crossed. I was asking people to leave a private chat with your email if you wanted to join us. And I'm just now checking my email and I've got emails from people that wanted to join us on this oh, chat. And so oh, I am so oh, sorry oh, because oh, I so thought we, we that will everybody do it again. heard me say to give me your email in the pri in the private chat. And I've been checking the private chat, but I ain't been seeing nobody's email. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were sending me email messages. I am so sorry. <laughs> so um, next time, next, next time. time you guys can join us because I, I wish I would have. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that, we, I mean, we're doing it no again. Hey, hey check know. this out. This now gives us a reason to do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Do something yeah, live will. again. So I am so sorry that I missed oh, your. Look at that. Look I, at I mean, I'm, look I'm, I'm, I got two computers here, so there's no way I could check emails at the same time. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> thank and you Ephraim, so much. Thank, really thanks everybody. You. I mean, thank you everybody as well. Thank oh, you thank for you sharing. Because we enjoy your comments and everything, and you know. And oh uh, yeah, I I have I have 32 years worth of stories. Okay. She said she would. T W said they would have voted for dog catcher if they could. That's probably <laughs> that's probably one of the most interesting things about leaving the organization is if you decide, and it's a personal thing, if you decide to vote. But one of the things that we realized very quickly when we left, uh -huh. they were building roads, deciding where they was going to put fire departments at, deciding how many police officers they were going to put here, what type of uh, development was going to go on, and all of a sudden we're like, well, we're part of this community, and if they if they don't put a firehouse across the street. You know, this is going to be this way. If they're going to make the road, they're going to pay these roads out here. And so all of a sudden, you begin to to clearly realize I'm part of the community. Mm -hmm. And and that was that is so sad that witnesses don't participate. Just one last just one last experience I want to share. When I was a kid, I was with an elder who was out in field service, and we was coming in town, and they would do this every so often. The fire department would have the guys that work at the firehouse. They would come up with those big boots, them them, them big fire department boots, and they would just walk from car to car as a light change. And they were people put money in. It was raised, it was trying to raise money for yeah. to get an ambulance, you know. And um, and I remember the elder telling the brother, oh, we don't contribute to that. We don't do that. And the guy and the fireman said, Well, if if we get this ambulance and somebody to a house gets sick, do you want us to come pick you up? And yeah. the, and, and the elder, well, you know, we, we pay taxes, and we, and so oh, it just God. it just set the tone of how. We live in these communities, mm -hmm. and yet we give nothing back to these communities. But we have no problem sucking everything out we can get. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey, it's been good. Y'all guys have a great weekend. We'll meet y'all guys tomorrow in Phil, sirs. Everybody need to be at the Kingdom Hall bright and early. We're going to start the court <laughs> witnessing. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh that was God. the main thing that my wife <laughs> loved when the when we woke up that next weekend she was like man the weekends are so we 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 have so much time during the weekends now yeah absolutely y'all hey, guys hang in there everybody have a great weekend okay, we'll wrap it up for us lady c we'll see y'all later we we will be doing these more often i know we need to come out more and play and Get out of our, um, you know, whatever we're doing. It's it's so much going on. It's just so much going on. But we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. We're going we're gonna to do better in 2023, put it that way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I got yeah, this year's hey, going to be really interesting. And and it's going as, as they say, Watchtower is a gift that keeps on giving. Boy. <laughs> right. Um, and I'm and I and I've got a channel. I, I I'm resurrecting my Lady C Hidden Struggles channel where you can learn life lessons without going through the experience. I'll be over there talking a bunch of stuff on my own. So y'all make sure y'all come out and support me over there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to be doing all kinds of stuff over there. So, yeah. So, but anyway, it's been real. And we're so it's happy that good. you guys were able to join us this evening. Thanks for our guest so this evening. I am going to uh, say that again. I said, thanks for our guest this evening. Yes. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You Ethan. We appreciate you. Absolutely. We share man. Puerto Rico absolutely. story someday.
Yeah, stay on, stay on. Don't go off yet. Okay. I'm, I'm just going yeah, yeah, just stay on. Okay, okay. Go. everybody, All y'all right, guys everybody have a great real. evening. We'll be in touch. Hang tight. Right. All we'll right, bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Yeah, I think if I end the broadcast,